Good morning. Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 2 of your worship booklet. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Collect of the day is for Easter 7, could be found on page 226 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 3 of your worship booklet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us, send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to, to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our guest lecturer this morning is Jerry Adams. A reading from Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judah, Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share of his ministry. So one of the men who had accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus Christ went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken from us, one of those must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Bersabbas, who was also known as Justice, and, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lots fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
continue with Psalm 1 and on, on the prayer book 585 or on page 3 of your bulletin. Let's say it in unison, please. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They delight in the law of the Lord, and they meditate in his law like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright, even judge nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord, Lord knows, knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Next is a reading from 1 John. <laughs> if we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to our Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be as one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good morning again. Please be seated. Well, that was a confusing gospel reading. As I was, re- as I was preparing for it, what came to my mind was the opening line of a Beatles song, I am the walrus. It's, I am he as you are he as you are me, and we are all together. You got to admit, that sounds like it comes directly from John's gospel, or at least it would fit right in. John Lennon later admitted that he wrote the line while taking acid, which makes sense. There's no evidence the writer of John's Gospel was on any hallucinogenic substances when he penned that late first century document, but who knows? In a sermon prep discussion this last week, Toby Rowe made the comment that without pronouns, John's Gospel wouldn't have much to it. And today's reading really affirms that. From the outset, pronouns and their potential for confusion dominate I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept their word. What? Seriously, who, what, when, where? And and as you heard, it goes on for all 13 verses. And I'll admit, it's tempting to find something else to preach on this last Sunday before Pentecost, right between the Ascension and Pentecost. Go to 1 John or the Psalms or even my beloved Acts. Although this week's lectionary reading from Acts features Matthias and Joseph slash Barsaba slash Justice, really just two minor characters, neither one of them gets mentioned again throughout the entire Bible. But the John reading is just too important to skip over, perched on this special Sunday, as I mentioned, between Thursday's Ascension Feast and next, next Sunday's Pentecost celebration. Plus, it's called the High Priestly Prayer, which suggests it's pretty important. And it's the clearest, to the extent it's clear, it's the strongest intercessory prayer that Jesus makes on his disciples' behalf. And that calls our attention, too. So I've tried to simplify the reading into what I think are four key themes that come out of it. One is unity with Jesus and God, and our unity is a part of that. Second is God's providential protection The third is the disciples being called and set apart. And fourth, and probably most importantly, is Christ as truth. So first, the unity between the disciples and Jesus, and therefore with God. The disciples closely model Jesus' earthly experience, when you think about it. They each have God's word, the logos. Jesus has received the knowledge from the source and has passed it along to his disciples. They are now, like him, part of the unity in God. Both Jesus and the disciples are sent into the world. They don't hide out. They're not separated from the world. And both do not belong to the world and are therefore hated by the world. And finally, they share a oneness with Jesus and God, just as Jesus and God are one. It's an incredibly intimate portrayal of how Jesus' mediation with God unites them and us to God and to each other. The second theme is Jesus' call for providential, for God's providential protection. Providential in the sense that God gives us everything we need. Jesus is asking for the same protective care that God offers him. The third theme is how the disciples are called and set apart. Now this is not a call for escape, but a call to be in the world and not of the world. In his life and words, Jesus reminds the church that the pattern of his own life was not escape from the world, but active engagement with the world, with all its distorted powers and pressures. Set apart, the second part of that, is another term for holy. When things are called holy, that means they are set apart, set apart for God's purposes. Now, they're not intrinsically made better. Holy water isn't atomically different than regular water. It's just water that's been set apart for God's reminder of connection with us in the baptism. Ancient Israel was a holy land because it was set apart for God's purposes, not because of any inherent superiority about it. The Israelites weren't inherently special, as most of the Old Testament attest. They had simply been set apart for God's purposes. And given the current unrest in that part of the world today, 
One wonders how God's purposes are being achieved in that set-apart land, that holy land. We should all pray for peace and justice for the Israelis and Palestinians. Now for John, this holiness, this set-apartness, was against the outside existence that had chosen to work at odds with God's purposes. It was and is a dangerous place, even though it looks and feels so attractive. As church, we should seek to constantly live in creative tension, in a state of being in the world, and yet not of that world. And the final theme is truth. This is an equally fraught term in the current environment, but we're talking here about an even greater truth. Christ is the truth that liberates through his word and life. To know the truth is to walk the way of a life that will set you free. This is the critical part of Jesus' prayer, and it carries significant implications for the disciples and for us as disciples of Christ today. First, when the gospel stresses live by the truth, it means we accept the demand to doing the truth in concrete actions. Second, it requires people of faith to tell the truth. Think of Dietrich Bonhoeffer in Nazi Germany. And you tell the truth as a consequence of a conduct and testimony that witnesses to that truth, that witnesses to that truth. And finally, it calls us to a discipleship that is both in solidarity with and an active promotion of truth. Now, this is work. This is hard work. And we are being called to Christ's truth and living into that, that will set us free. Now earlier I noted that Jesus reminds us as church that the pattern of his own life was not escape from the world, but active engagement with the world, even with all its distorted powers and pressures. And boy, those distorted powers and pressures seem to grow every day. I continually pray for our community. I'm worried about us. I want us to overcome our divisions, to come together and to love one another as Christ loved us, to witness everyone as a beloved child of God, regardless of race, religion, gender, sexuality, income, politics, home life, or even the mistakes they've made at their lowest moments. And to know that in that state of belovedness, I am called to love each and every one of them, to stop judging and just love. Much harder than it seems when I try to put it in practice. Over the past few weeks, I've been wondering how we here as church, St. Peter's, can help heal some of the divisions that are pulling us apart as a community and as a society. You see, it kind of makes sense for a place of worship or places of worship, places like church, to lead us toward healing. Politically speaking, Though, right now, church is yet another place we come to, I think, for confirmation of our beliefs and not the alternative. As you know, St. Peter's is a relatively, although not uniformly, progressive place. A sermon that tends to the more liberal political perspective here would be comfortably received here by most of the listeners, not all. Conversely, my Baptist preacher neighbor, who had a Trump sign on his porch during the election, would be expected to preach a more politically conservative sermon if he wanted to be well received at his church. So we're just exacerbating the problem and speaking to our own little tribes, our own little bubbles. And what I'm going to tell you about may strike many of you as a fool's errand, but sometime this coming week, we'll be sending personalized letters to every member of the clergy we can find here in the Conway community. And I'm calling it Common Ground. And it will be an invitation to come together as leaders of our respective parishes and address head-on the issues that are tearing up this community and the nation as well. In this spirit of understanding, we'll address those topics head-on. Black Lives Matter, police brutality, transgender rights, abortion rights, January 6th, and so on. And around each topic, we'll address four areas of questions, and I think this is where we find common ground. The first area is, what do you love? What do you value? What will you struggle to protect? The second area is, what have you lost? What keeps you up at night? What has been lost in your community? 
What do you miss? For example, I miss togetherness. Where does it hurt? I think that's where most of these emotions come from. How have you been wounded by life? What makes you angry? How or where do you feel that pain and anger? And finally, what do you dream? What do you hope for the future for yourself, your family, your community, and your nation? Now these questions are taken from a brand new campaign put out by our church, the Episcopal Church, called, quote, From Many One, Conversations Across Difference, end quote. And it invites Episcopalians and our neighbors to engage in one-to-one listening and sharing across the many differences that separate us. And the website, From Many One, claims that, quote, as a church, we can offer a faithful perspective and tested practice for knitting deeply divided communities into a diverse, more perfect union. And to me personally, doing this helps affirm our creedal statement of belief that we're going to say in a few minutes in the Nicene Creed. When we, every, uh, when we say one holy Catholic and apostolic church, one church, every week we affirm this connection and then we disappear back into our bubbles. We're sending the letters to each of the 72 churches in Conway. We only chose Conway. I'm still surprised there are 72, but not surprised. I'm not sure what form or forms is going to come out of this. This is only the first step. And if you're interested in helping out or learning more, let me know, and I'll make sure this week's Wake Up has a link to the notation from the uh, Episcopal Church. I'd like to think that as church and community leaders, we can learn from this. We can develop deeper understanding and empathy for those with differing opinions. And we identify where we share common ground, and that's the most important thing. And then we model that to our congregations. We break out of our bubbles. To me, that's the one way we can be in the world and yet not of the world, and fight for the truth, Christ's truth, to actively engage with the world, even, especially with all its distorted powers and pressures. As John wrote in this morning's gospel, all mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. Let it be so. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join me in reciting the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed, which can be found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 5 of your worship booklet. We believe in one God, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for, for our, our families, families friends, friends, and, and neighbors, and, and for, for those, those who are alone. alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all, for all who work, work for justice, justice freedom, and, and peace, for the just and proper use of our creation, for the, for the victims, victims of hunger, fear, fear injustice, and, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For Lee, Kuhl, and family, Bonda, Amanda, and family, Shane, Barbara, Thomas, Paige, Mason, Carly, Olivia, Austin, Sarah, Fred and Judy, Kay, Liz, Nancy, Aaron and family, Mike and family, Rick and family, Angie and Chauncey, Edna, Jen and Chris, Trent, Ryan and Lauren, Shannon and Nancy, Cohen, Judy, Janet, Bridget, Selma and Jerry, Kelly, Kathy, Mariah, Rachel, Jolie, Danny and Dinah, Milton and Rita, Barry and Loria, Paula and Nancy, Patsy and Ed, Ed and Lana, Bev and Ken, Monica and family, Mary and Dee, Miles and family, Franklin, Mary Ann, David, and any of those to be added by the congregation. In loving support of the Wisdom House, Moaz, Natalie, Momina, Kanza, Rasha, and all those impacted by the conflict in Syria. In continued prayer for Sarah Edmondson, Jackie Saroy, Betty Long, and Judith McAfee. Carol Sue Greenwall, Eleanor Smith, Frank and Betty Jordan, and Father Pat Young. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for the people of St. Peter's and virtual and in-person visitors with us this week. We give thanks for Chloe Hammett, Brett and Brandon Hardison, Jane Harris, Emily Harris. We give thanks for our choir members. We give thanks for Grace, Bapt Grace Bible Church. We give thanks for the Islamic Center of Little Rock. We give thanks for, the, for Reverend Miguel Salinek and James of Jerusalem, Chim, Chimmy Tanango and St. Andrews and St. In in Andrews, it's, it's, it's Ipaca. We give thanks to St. Mark's Jonesboro, Christ Church Little Rock, and Chancellor John Tisdale. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may be, have a place in your eternal kingdom. Anything from the congregation for anyone departed would be welcome now. Let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, 
that we may live and serve you in our The honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Since I'm flying solo today, uh, Peggy is down at the Gulf Shores. We'll be doing communion a bit differently. I will start off, I'll come over here, and if we could just do as we always do, process around, come down the aisle, and then go that way, and then I'll come over here. And the esters will guide you through this. Again, just, just sort of come around that way. So, uh, so anyway, it may take a few minutes longer, but uh, uh, we'll at least make it through it. So. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, which can be found on page 369 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page page 8 of your worship booklet. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. You forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. 
Have mercy on us, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return through prophets and sages who revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his wounds, by his wounds, we are And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord, God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Ruth, Esther, and Naomi, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And wherever you are in your journey of faith, know that you are welcome at Christ's table.
Post-communion prayer can be found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 11 of your worship booklet. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. May God give you the grace not to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. And may God take your hearts and set them on fire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Yeah. <laughs>